We've completed research of baggage security tier 2 and belt loaders. Now I'm going to jump straight in and start on baggage tier 3 because I want to demonstrate both of them simultaneously rather than trying to rebuild my baggage security over and over again. I recommend you do this yourselves when you're playing through this game. As I think I've said before, it's much easier to build your baggage security in one hit rather than building it, then having to disconnect something to put in a new piece, then building the next bit, then disconnecting it again, and back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I've already laid out a potential plan here for the tier 2 security, and I'm not sure that I'm happy with it, so I'm going to have another go at that. I'm much happier with this layout for my tier 2 security, and I've gone ahead and done that already for this section of the airport. What you can see is I've got tier one. So you've, you've got your check-in. It comes in and gets scanned by tier one. If tier one thinks there's a problem, it kicks it down this line. And shortly we're gonna connect that up to tier two. If tier two thinks there's a problem, it kicks it down any of these five lines, which I'll talk about more in a moment, and would go through to get destroyed. But we're gonna disconnect that because we want to insert tier 3 and it really is a tiered system you go through tier 1 if tier 1 says it's okay you know the bag is safe it can go on the plane if it gets through all of the tier 5 uh, sorry tier 2 checks and is deemed to be okay it can go through and get on the plane it's really a case of refining what the problem is with the bag so a tier 1 scanner is a, a reasonably dumb scanner and it makes a lot of mistakes and says this is dangerous even when it's actually not. Tier 2 breaks things down by type. So if we go back to our options here, we've got organics, guns, explosives, drugs and money. So when the bags are getting scanned, they get scanned specifically for each of those five things in Tier 2. And then finally, once, once we have tier 3 available, it will get checked by a human rather than by a machine. There is another little trap to this, which I will talk about once I have the actual research done. While I was waiting for the tier 3 research to complete, I went ahead and finished building my tier 2 uh, security. Now it's time to place in our tier 3s. I am going to do this in planning mode just to make sure I put things exactly where I want them. Um, and it's going to be there and there. Uh, sorry, no, there. And likewise for the other section, we're going to have, uh, let's see, we're going to have it here and here. Now the reason for placing two is that humans make mistakes. Just like the machines can be creating false positives, humans do periodically make mistakes and that's a factor of how well trained your security staff are. So if we look at our security staff in this airport, you can see they're all very highly skilled. The higher skilled they are, the less likely they are to make mistakes. But in addition to that, is a factor of how tired they are and how uh, urgently they need to go to the bathroom and that sort of thing. So it's always a very good idea to keep your um, staff rooms and staff available toilets facilities very close to your baggage security. Here we've got a problem because while these rooms are very close in terms of how the crow flies, there's no short path between here, in fact I'll show you, if I pick a security officer, there's no short path between here and here, they have to go, actually it's not that bad, security staff can go backwards through a security gate, whereas I was thinking in terms of other staff, if I look at um, just a regular employee, they have to go out through the security exit all the way around through this door 
and so on. So if security staff had to follow that loop, it would take them a long time to rest. And likewise, there's a problem in the reverse direction when they're finished resting and they need to get back here to replace the other person that's not been on shift. Now, we obviously need to connect up the actual belt. So these ones are obvious, they connect there. And this one should be obvious, that connects there. And actually I've done this incorrectly. I'm going to slow the game back down so you can see the arrows more clearly. I want a bag to be scanned twice by a human. At the moment, it wouldn't be. It would only be scanned twice if um, if it was passed rather than failed. So we're going to need to remove some of this. In fact, I'll remove all of that and do a bit of a loop around. So go back to our conveyor belt. It's going to go in there. Don't actually need to get rid of that bit in theory, but our contractors will no doubt delete it anyway. And we also need to connect this section and this section. But you can see I've now caused a problem for myself. I can't get this positive loop outside, so I'm going to delete the whole section here and have another think. Trying to do this in a confined space is rather difficult. You probably want to leave more room than this or spend a lot of time in planning mode. <laughs> Unfortunately with these there is no way to reverse the direction or change the side that the bad baggage comes out of. It would be much easier for me if I could do so because then I'd be able to have um, you know coming in this way bad baggage this way come down turn around go out the left side instead of yeah it's just not an option so I need to leave Ooh, let's see right once there's room to place it here I can make this work, it's just not very pretty. Now the second case of being scanned by a human is optional. There's a fair bit of debate in the community about whether it's worth having or not and whether it actually makes a difference or not. I'm of the opinion that it does help, but I haven't done a case study to prove it. Ah, and we have a problem with our conveyor belts. Yes, that's definitely going the wrong direction. And you can see this takes quite a while, which is why it's really better to plan it all out and do it in one hit, rather than having bags get stuck like this. Hooray, it's finally connected up. Oh! <laughs> I'm not sure what happened there. Okay, I need to get rid of that one. With a bit of luck, that will stay put. Okay, good, the contractor actually left it. So that may be a surprise discovery and possibly one of the most useful things about this episode if that proves to be the way it works. I removed this baggage belt and replaced it before the contractor could get here and destroy it and the direction got corrected. So I might experiment with that in our second section. So again, slowing the game down, I need to connect here, and then if this is, let's do the good lane first, if this is good, it goes up there. If it's bad, I need to move that. If it's bad, it will get scanned again. If it's deemed good at that point, it can go up here. And if it's still bad, it can get destroyed. Now I don't need this bit anymore. 
and I need to build this and we can see if we go into conveyor belt mode we can see the belts are going the wrong way here so let's give it a shot let's pause control click 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 and click and then let's see if we can convince the game nope so I may have just got lucky that previous time I don't seem to be able to force it to go the direction I want that's unfortunate there may be a trick to it if I ever find it out I will definitely make a video on it maybe a question of um, let's try that it may be a question of doing one or two blocks at a time so we'll get our contractors over here incidentally there's another problem with this baggage section that I've just spotted there's no way for security to get here right now and I noticed that because the contractors aren't showing up they're working through the floor in order to actually deal with this so before I engage all of that I need to make it possible for security to get here now the easiest way is going to be to put some stairs over in this unused corner and we will do an episode on using multiple floors so don't worry if you're not quite sure what's going on right now um, I will place it that way around it's not quite where I wanted it there Ooh, and we have a lot of red flags so I'm gonna have to do an episode on identifying all the pathing issues that I have with this particular airport I know a lot of them are coming from the accidental joining up of two security zones but investigating that is not what today's video is about okay we now have a way for security staff to get down here and hey presto here they come so let's see if we can get our conveyor belt to join up I wanted to go that way and that way and then get rid of these that should do the trick it's really a question of timing if a bag gets stuck here I'm probably just gonna wait for it to despawn rather than trying to resolve it yep so quite a few bags have been stuck but now that that tile has been removed, it will go the correct way. Now I mentioned earlier, it's really a, it really is a case of tiers. Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3. You can think of the second Tier 3 scanner as actually Tier 4. Is it potentially dangerous? Yes. Is it potentially one of these five kinds of dangerous? Yes. Does this person think it's dangerous? Yes. Does this person think it's dangerous? Yes. Destroy. It's about removing any chance of destroying a bag which isn't actually dangerous. Or well, let's say it's a toy gun. This says, oh, there's something gun shaped. Yep, there's definitely something gun shaped. Yeah, there's definitely something gun shaped. It's even got metal in it. Uh, yeah, no, that's just a toy gun. Let's put it back on the plane. It's fine. I mentioned earlier there needs to be a staff room and a bathroom nearby for these guys to rest at so that the changeover of staff is something that can happen quickly. And that really applies to security checkpoints as well. I've got nothing down here, but the stairs are right there there's a staff room right there there isn't a bathroom particularly close I'm very much inclined to put a small one down here just for security stuff and there we have it our security for baggage is complete and we've got abilities for our security staff very close to where they're having to work 
And I'll just show you one last thing, because you may have spotted something that looks like a graphical glitch. This little square of baggage belt looks slightly different to the rest, and that's because I accidentally painted it. <laughs> so I'm going to set that back to white so it looks like all the rest, and do the same there, I think. Oh, no, that one's fine. So the only baggage feature we haven't covered yet is tilt trays, which I will cover when we have more uh, plane stands that need them, and therefore more baggage bays that need them. With the belt loader research done, of course, we can go ahead and actually purchase some. So we'll go into our vehicle section, purchase a vehicle, and find some belt loaders. Now, I don't feel like I need one for every stand, so I'm just going to get three for the moment. And now that my belt loaders have arrived, I'm going to assign them all to this depot up here. By being assigned to this depot, they are part of Terminal 2, and they will be able to service any of my medium aircraft stands. Not all medium planes require a belt loader, and as I've said before, a belt loader really just speeds up the process. It doesn't prevent the process from happening if you don't have one. So I think three will be enough. I'll keep an eye on that. I may purchase some more. It's a case of seeing how busy they are and watching for how many jobs are available. If there's, um, here we've got two claimed and one available. That means our three hired trucks should be sufficient. Uh, I think there's a small bit of trouble with one of the trucks actually getting to the right location at the moment, which I will take care of. But the quantity I have appears to be sufficient right now. Now that I've solved the problem with the pathing that was causing my belt loader truck not to get into my terminal, I can see that I do actually need some more. So I will get a fifth, fourth and fifth truck so that we definitely have enough when we need them. And again, I'm just going to assign them to this depot so that they can serve any of the medium stands that we have in that section of the airport. Now there should be plenty, so that when we have four or five jobs, we've got, see, we even had it just a moment there, we had four jobs claimed. So having that fourth and fifth truck is definitely making an improvement. I can see I've got a similar problem with baggage trucks and my fuel trucks, so I may actually purchase some more of those as well. Now I've been having trouble working out which of my airport sections needs the extra baggage trucks, and it looks like it's probably the Terminal 2 for the medium airplanes, so I'm going to add them to that once I purchase them.